Hey, y'all, welcome to 5-Minute Bible Study, where a 5-minute journey through Scripture can change your life. Today we're going to continue with this healing motif that we left off with yesterday. Now Jesus is moving from the healing of the one man to healing of many. We're going to see uh, Jesus healing his mother, uh, his Simon Peter's mother-in-law, and then they're going to see how he starts healing many people. Jesus doing miraculous things things here. Uh, so if you will, if you have your Bibles or if you're listening, just uh, we're going to look at chapter 1, verse 29, and we're going to go through verse 34. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to, to immediately um, to her and took her by the hand and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. The evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. <clears throat> the whole town gathered at the door. Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. So yesterday we were in the synagogue and Jesus drives out an impure spirit. Now they have left the synagogue. Um, nighttime is starting to fall and they come into Simon Peter's house. We know that Simon seems like he was married. He's coming into his house, and his mother-in-law is very, very sick. Um, we're just told that she's laying in bed and uh, that she is sick. <clears throat> and then Jesus goes in, and he takes her by the hand, and he tells her to get up. And, it, and what's in interesting here is the immediacy. We're not given any details. We're not told what she's sick with. We're not told how sick she is, if she's on the verge of dying or not or whatever. And we're not told what Jesus' reaction is other than he goes goes to her, immediately goes to her, immediately grabs her hand and immediately pulls her out of the bed and she's healed and she's able to wait on them. Can you imagine that? Who knows how long she has been in bed? Who knows how long she has been laying there? And now she's actually able to serve Jesus and the disciples and all those who are in the house. What a, what a wonderful picture here of healing and what God um, did in um, Simon's mother-in-law's life. <clears throat> Well, what's interesting here, that word serve, when it says that uh, she went over, she, she then waited on them or she then served them, that word serve in the Greek is only used three other times in the Gospel of Mark. One, right here at the beginning of the Gospel of Mark, talking about the mother-in-law of Simon. The other is used when speaking of angels serving, but then it's also used when talking about Jesus, what Jesus does when He serves. And I think Mark is wanting to get us an understanding here that not only has Jesus come to heal those so that they may serve Him, but He has also come to serve. He has also come to serve. And there's that beautiful picture um, that we get when Jesus, is, when Jesus washes um, His disciples' feet at, during the, um, after the Last Supper, that, that beautiful, beautiful picture of him, um, of his service to his disciples. Um, so that evening, after all this has happened with Peter's mother-in-law, we have now that people are hearing what Jesus has done, and they're bringing their sick. They're bringing the demon-possessed. They're bringing those who are, who are on the outside of society. They're bringing them to the door, and Jesus is healing them. He has great compassion on these people. He doesn't turn them away. He heals them. He casts out the demons. He, he takes care of them. He heals the sick, and, and, he, and he brings new life and to people's lives who had lost everything, who had been put out on the edges of society, who had lost their homes, who had been kicked out because their diseases were communicable, or, or who, had been, who had been ostracized because they were misunderstood because of demon possession or whatever was going on in their lives. These people were able to come back into community, to come back home. And Jesus understood that, and that's why he did what he did. What's interesting is when we talk about the demonic, isn't it interesting? It says, Mark says, he healed the sick and he cast out the demons. And when he cast out the demons, he told the demons, don't speak. You know who I am, and you're not allowed to speak. And the demons obeyed him. Again, an amazing, an amazing thing. One of the things I love about Jesus and what I love about reading these healing stories is how Jesus brings us back into community. He brings us back into community when our bodies are failing. He brings us back into community when we are being um, entangled by sin and demonic powers or whatever it is. He brings us back in community when we put our trust in Him. Remember, 
God so loved the world. He so loved you that he sent his son, Jesus. He sent his son, Jesus, and Jesus has come to set us free. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for another five-minute Bible study.